So let's go ahead and open up a single app. We're gonna open Google Chrome. And in order to go into split screen view, all you have to do is click on the three dots at the top, and then you can click on split view. And then from there, you can choose whatever app you want. So you can go to your apps, for example, let's say YouTube. And now that takes us to our default split screen view. Now, if you need to resize either of these windows, you'll notice you have this gray bar in the middle. So if we tap and we hold on that, we can resize either of the windows. You also have the option to switch sides for the apps. So if you want YouTube on the left, Google Chrome on the right, we can tap that gray bar and it gives us the option to switch sides just like so. We can also add a third app. An easy way is just to click the three dots on one of the windows, click on split view once again, and then we can select Amazon Music. Let's let that be our third app. And the same thing applies if we need to reposition or adjust the apps. We have two sets of gray bars, so I can come over here, tap and hold that, and I can just kind of drag it to the right. Same thing, Amazon Music is tucked over on the right there. If I need to access that, press and hold the gray bar, bring that over just like that. Another cool option is that you can actually take four fingers and you can just kind of pinch them on the screen and that will allow you to view all three apps at the same time. And then to go back to the default view, you can take the same four fingers and just kind of spread them out just like that and you're back to where you started. If you need to change any one of the apps, you can probably guess, all you have to do is click on the three dots at the top of the app that you wanna change. For example, over here, click that and we can click on switch app and we can go to, let's say notes for example, and that will swap out Google Chrome for our notes app. If you need to close any of the apps, all you gotta do is click on the three dots. You can select close just like that. Another option you have when you're in this three view setup is that you can actually take one of the apps and put them on the bottom. So for example, let's say YouTube, I can click on the three dots at the top of the window. And if I click on expand, we get kind of a two up one down setup. So you can see I got YouTube right here and then I have a gray bar at the top. If I drag that down, that takes me to the two at the top. And then if you wanna go back to the default view, all you have to do is come down here. Let's go and click on the three dots for YouTube and we can click on shrink. And that takes us back to the side by side style setup. And then another option that you have is that you can turn any of the three apps into a floating window. So again, let's say YouTube, for example, click on the three dots and then tap floating window. And now we have Amazon Music, we have Google Chrome as the main apps. And then in this smaller window, we have YouTube there just kind of floating on top. And we can reposition that by pressing and holding the three dots at the top. And you can also resize the window. So if you click on the edges like that, you can just kind of drag it up and that will make it bigger or smaller. And then when you don't need that floating window, if you just wanna park it on the side, click the three dots and select minimize. And as you can see, it just kind of pins it over there on the left side of the screen. Now to access it, simply just drag it over just like that. Now, another option you have as far as adding apps to your split screen view is the sidebar. So let's actually switch sides here. All right, so now we have Amazon Music over here and that makes it easier to see the gray sidebar right there. And if we simply drag that over like that, you can see you've got some apps over here to choose from. So you can see we got a couple just hanging out there, but if we want to add more, you can simply go to edit and you can choose whatever apps you want to stay in that sidebar. But for now, let's just keep things as they are. And just for an example, if I click on Google Chrome, you can see that opens up a floating window now let's actually go ahead and add that to the split screen view. Now, another thing that is really cool is that if you ever exit out of your split screen view, you can click on the recent tasks, the little three lines there, and it'll keep that split screen view that you had in your recent tasks so that you can access it once again. You'll also notice that there's an icon right down there as well that allows you to access the split screen view. So you can just simply click that just like that and it takes you back to where you were. 
Something else that's really useful is that if you have a split screen setup that you plan on using on a consistent basis, you can actually save it. So for example, here, I got YouTube, I have Amazon Music, and now I have my notes over here. I can click on one of these gray bars in the middle in between the windows, and I can select save as app group. So now if I actually close out of these apps, so everything is closed, but now if I swipe over on my home screen, you can see I have an icon with those three apps and all I have to do is click on that and it takes us right back to our setup. So if you're familiar with OnePlus devices, then I'm sure you probably know you can take three fingers and you can swipe on the screen just like that and it'll take a screenshot. Another option you have is you can take three fingers and you can tap and hold and then it allows you to select the exact section of the screen that you want to grab. And from there, it takes you into the editor if you need to make any changes. If not, just simply click the check bar in the top right and you're good to go. Now, this also works with the touchpad on the keyboard if you get the keyboard accessory. So again, I can take three fingers and I can just swipe down on the touchpad. As you can see, it takes a screenshot. And the same thing works if I want to take a screenshot of a section. I can take three fingers, tap and hold, and then I can adjust that on the touchpad just like so. Something else that's really cool is if you're in a split screen view like we have right here, and you only want to take a screenshot of one side of the screen, all you have to do is take your three fingers and swipe on the side of the screen that you want to grab. So for example, over here, and the same thing for over here, I can take my three fingers over here and it'll only take a screenshot of the YouTube app. Next up, let's take a look at some of the AI features. And one of those features is circle to search. And all you have to do to activate that is press and hold on the home button, just like so. And then you can take your finger and you can circle whatever it is you have a question about. For example, that one plus 12 there, and it brings us the results. And as you can see, it's able to identify it. Now, another option is your assistant, your Google Gemini. And one way you can activate that is by pressing and holding the power button. So press and hold that. Another way to access Google Gemini is to press the AI button on the keyboard, as you can see. And then there's also a microphone button on the keyboard as well. And that does the same thing. Another option I really like is the AI summary option right over here. That little gray bar, drag that over. You can see I have AI summary. And basically, if I click that, it will scan this article and then it will create a summary of the key points. I can choose to copy this summary. I can share the summary. I can also save it to a note. Another option you have, if we go back to the sidebar is AI speak, and you can actually choose to have the article read to you. So if you don't feel like reading it for whatever reason, you can choose that option. And as you can see, you can choose between a male voice or a female voice, and you can also adjust the speed at which it reads. All right, quick break, just to tell you guys about something that's a total game changer when it comes to international travel, and that's the Vasco Translator V4. Now, these days, a phone and Google Translate goes a long way, but that's not always the best option for privacy and security reasons. The Vasco V4 solves that. It supports up to 112 languages, it works in nearly 200 countries, and it even comes with free, unlimited lifetime connectivity. That means no SIM cards, no extra fees, and no data limits. One of my favorite features is the photo translation. You can point it at a sign, a menu, or even documents, and it'll instantly translate it for you. It's perfect for exploring or handling important info on the go. Now, what really sets the V4 apart is the accuracy. It uses 10 different translation engines, so you get much more reliable and natural translations compared to most apps that rely on just one. It's compact, it's easy to use, and you can even save and share your conversations as PDFs, which is awesome if you're working or studying abroad. If you travel a lot or just want a reliable backup to your phone, definitely check it out. The link is in the description and you can use the code on the screen to save 10%. Now let's get back to it. 
Now, if you're a person that also owns a OnePlus phone, as long as both devices are signed into the same OnePlus account, the tablet can tap into your phone's 5G data connection whenever you're out and about. You got a number of other options as well. So let's actually go into the settings and we're gonna go to the connection and sharing tab. And you wanna make sure you have Quick Connect turned on. And from there, we can go to multi-screen connect and you can see we have our list of devices and on that list is our OnePlus 13. And if we click that, one of the options we have is we can mirror the screen of our phone onto our tablet. And anything that we do over here also happens on the phone. Now you also are able to access the files on each device. So you can see it says cross device file management. If we click that, that allows us to access everything that we have on the OnePlus 13. So for example, photos, videos, things of that nature, you don't necessarily have to send them back and forth. You can access them directly on the device. So let's go ahead and go back. And then if we scroll down, you can see some of the other options that you have. Uh, for example, you have app relay. So if you're using an app on your phone, let's say you're using Instagram, an icon will pop up in your taskbar on the tablet. And if we click on that, it'll basically allow us to take over the app from our phone. So we simply click start and we give it a couple seconds. And now we can pick up exactly where we left off on the phone. There's also the option of content sync. So basically that allows you to sync everything between the two devices. So for example, if I come over here and I copy and paste certain text, let's say I just copy and paste a section of this article, it'll actually paste that to the clipboard on the tablet as well. And I can paste exactly what I copied from my phone over here on the tablet. Now, if you're an iPhone user, a feature that you're probably used to is AirDrop, and you can actually get a similar experience using the O Plus Connect app. You will have to download the app on your iPhone, and once you download it, you'll simply open the app, and once you do that, you can actually transfer files between the devices. So right here, we actually have a screenshot that we took earlier, and I can go and I can click on the share icon, and you can see one of the options is share with iPhone. So again, as long as the O Plus Connect app is open on the iPhone, I can click on that. And as you can see, it detects the iPhone. I can simply press that, give it a couple seconds, and then I'll come over here. I'll click accept, and then we're going to join. It's gonna create a hotspot for the iPhone to join. And as you can see, it has transferred the picture. Now, something else that's really cool is that there's a desktop version of the O Plus Connect app as well, and it's available for Mac or PC. So as you can see, OnePlus Pad 3 shows up right there. And if I go to view, it allows us to access all the files from our Pad 3. Let's say I click on one of these screenshots here and I go here, you can see I have the option to save to PC. If we need to transfer something from the computer to our Pad 3, all I have to do is drag and drop this over there and it's gonna transfer it over to our pad three, as you can see. And then if we go to our settings on the pad three and go into connection and sharing and click on remote PC control, and then we click on our MacBook Pro, click on remote desktop. So you can see this is my desktop. Um, if I need to access a video file, I can click on that and it'll play just as if I was using my MacBook Pro. And as you can see, everything I do over here on the Pad 3 takes effect on the MacBook Pro as well. Now, if you disconnect the keyboard from the tablet, as you can see, fully disconnected, you do have the option of Bluetooth. So it'll automatically connect through Bluetooth. As you can see, the cursor still works. So if you want to maybe have your tablet on a desk and you want to use the keyboard, let's say on your lap, whatever is most comfortable for you, you do have that option. Something else that's really cool is whenever you flip the keyboard in back of the tablet, it actually turns the keyboard off. So 
you have the buttons back here, but you know, if you press them, nothing will happen and you can just simply use the touch screen. Now, another really cool feature with the keyboard is the NFC touchpad on the right hand side. And that allows you to do things like transfer files. As you can see, I'm in the photo gallery. I have an image selected. And then if I grab my phone, as long as I have NFC turned on on my phone, all I have to do is place it on that NFC touchpad. And as you can see, it'll start to transfer that image. And there it is. Now you can also use the touchpad to mirror the screen of your OnePlus device, much like we already did. So if I take my OnePlus 13, put it on the NFC surface, as you can see, the prompts will come up. All we gotta do is click start. And now we're able to access our OnePlus 13 directly on our tablet. So let's actually go into settings and let's go down to system and update. And then we're going to go to stylus and a few things you wanna make sure you have turned on our screen off note. As you can see, we have that activated. And then where it says swipe from the top right corner, we have that set to take a quick note and then double tap to switch. We have that set to switch between the current tool and the eraser. So let's actually take a look at what all that means. Whenever the tablet is off, if you take the stylus and you just start pressing on the screen, it automatically takes you to a note. And then as far as swiping from the top right corner, as you can see, do like that, it automatically brings up your notepad so you can go ahead and start taking notes very, very quickly. Now, when you're taking your notes, an easy way to switch between the pen and the eraser is to double tap the stylus just like that. As you can see, now we're able to erase, double tap it again, and it goes back to the pen tool. Now, another option you have with the stylus is presentation mode. So if you go into your settings, go down to system and update, go over to stylus, and then if you scroll down, you can activate presentation mode. Now with presentation mode active, we can use the stylus like a laser pointer, and to do that, you simply tap and hold on the stylus. And as you can see, the little red cursor comes up. You can also draw annotations. To do that, you simply double tap and then you press and hold. And you can see you can place a mark wherever you want. And then in order to erase it, you simply double tap just like that. So that pretty much covers it. Those are some of the key features that I think help in terms of productivity when it comes to the OnePlus Pad 3. Hopefully you guys found it to be helpful. And if you have some tips and tricks to help improve productivity, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. Aside from that, I appreciate you guys for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.